basically right angle triangles. It's uh, talking about triangles that have a 90 degree angle in them. Okay. The, the one thing to keep in mind that uh, triangles, the sum of the angles in a triangle equals 180. Okay. And there's six pieces of information in a triangle. There are three angles and there's three sides. Now the way they usually work triangles is they use the uh, capital letters to represent the angle and the small case letters to represent the side. That's true until we get to, actually, actually I'm going to change the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. That we were consistent with the drawing. So uh, there's six pieces of info in a triangle, uh, three angles and three sides. Now one way you should think about this is the angle opposite the side controls the size of the angle. Okay. Now, if you think about angle A, now angle A controls side A. Angle C controls side C. And angle B controls side B. Okay. The way this works is, I'm just going to show it to you. Now, just to understand what the relationship between a side of a triangle and the angle is, Consider this, okay, I got myself some drumsticks here. Now, think of this as a triangle. Well, it is a triangle. Now, if I change this angle, which side, just you gotta think, uh, think to yourself, which side does it change? So if I decrease this angle, and this angle is decreasing, which side is changing? The side that's changing is the opposite, the angle. So, an angle controls this opposite side. That's true for all, all angles, if I have this one, and I decrease this angle, then this side is decreasing. Okay. If I change the top angle, then the bottom side is changing. It's decreasing or increasing accordingly. Okay. So an angle controls this opposite side. So this angle over here is going to control this side here. If I decrease this angle, this side is decreasing. That's why when they write triangles, uh, you know, draw up triangles and they letter them or number them or alphabetize them or whatever you want to call it. Um, an angle over here is represented by the smaller case letter across from it, okay? Very important because when you're dealing with sine, cosine, and tangent, that's what they refer to when they say opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Now, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse, whew, the hypotenuse here, the hypotenuse up here is across from the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse always refers to the side across from the 90 degree angle. Okay. Um, now some people have a hard time understanding sine, cosine, and tangent and how they're related, but they shouldn't. Um, once you grasp the concept that the angle controls the opposite side, then that's the relationship you have. Now take a look at this. For for uh, trig functions, you have sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Now, theta is just a Greek alphabet. Now, math is a very powerful language. It, uh, it's, it, it spans everything. Everything is based on math. So the, the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z, is not enough for us to uh, there are not enough symbols for us to deal with mathematics. So what uh, math has done is reached out into different languages and used symbols from them. So theta, beta, gamma, uh, all those symbols you see that are, that are non, uh, they're not the alphabet, they're not the English alphabet, they're actually taken from different languages. So they, they're the alphabet from different languages. That's specifically from the Greek language, okay? So don't let theta or different symbols throw you off. When they put different symbols for sine, cosine, and tangent, all they're using is um, just a different alphabet. It could be just saying sine A, cos B, you know, tan A. It doesn't make a difference. So don't let the alphabet throw you off or the symbols that they're using.